Hello, um, my name is George Kier. I am an immigrant from Liberia, and um, I came to the United States in 2001 as a refugee from Ghana. As a result of the Liberian Civil War, I did um, while in New Jersey, I did go to school as a nurse and um, obtained um, my associate degree as a registered nurse, and then relocated to join my wife in Minnesota. And then um, one year, I'd, um, I did go back to school to obtain my bachelor's degree in nursing. Um, I did work at um, um, Texas Terrace Nursing Home, that's in St. Louis Park, um, Minnesota. I worked from there. I worked uh, at the nursing home from um, 2009, um, July, June 2009 to um, September 2011 when I was fired as a result of my admittance that I do support um, SEIU Union. And um, while there, there were a lot of things that I did see that were not right, and of course, then I decided to join the union so as to make some things right. Can you tell us a little bit about the about the nursing home in St. Louis Park? Well, Texas Terrace Nursing Home is um, it's a nursing home that belongs to the Extended Care Nursing Home. Um, they have many nursing homes in the United States, about 400 or so nursing homes. And it's uh, one of the subsidiaries of um, extended care. Um, Texas Terry has a lot of workers, uh, many of them are immigrant workers from African descent. And of course, um, they have been um, working with Texas Terry as long as I've worked there. And um, many of the nurses and the nursing assistants and the team here, many of them are Africans, from African background. And um, they do a good job, they recognize the need to be compassionate and care for the patients but uh, they did not get back uh, the benefits that they deserve for the labor that they put in. When did you first recognize the need for a union? Um, I recognized the need for the union um, when, um, Brenda, when I met with Brenda and um, talked to him about it, but before then, never talked about a union coming in to help. But I knew that there was problems on the ground that were existing that needed to be changed. And what were some of those problems? Some of the problems included um, wage gap between um, people of different color who are doing the same work, like the wage gap between whites who were doing the same job as the African immigrants, and but the pay gaps were wide enough. What kind of pay gaps were there? We're talking about like nine, ten dollars for the African workers, and then we're talking about like eighteen, nineteen dollars for the white workers. That's per hour. Per hour. Yes. For doing what kind of, for doing the same job? The same job, like a nursing assistant job, mm -hmm. you know, helping the patients, um, doing um, activities of daily living and basic care for the patient. The reposition the patient, changing incontinence pad, walking the patient, feeding the patient, grooming the patient, this kind of work. Is that hard work? Well, um, comparatively, yes, it is hard work compared to the number of patients that you have to work with and things that you have to do. And um, yeah, it's a hard work. When you first got the, when you first were thinking about doing putting together a union, um, I take it you, you talked with other people about it. Yes, I did talk to people about it. When I met Brendan, we did talk about uh, the need to have a union represent the workers. When, when I accepted the challenge and then I went on the ground and started to talk to my co-workers and I recruited many of them who agreed to, to join the effort to have the workers unionize. Now you mentioned that many of the workers, many of your co-workers are from Africa, are immigrants like yourself. Where are they from? Some are from Liberia, others are from Sierra Leone. Um, majority of them are from Kenya, which is in East Africa. Yeah. And when you talked with them about putting together a union, what was their response? Many of them were afraid. They were afraid and... Um, Why were they afraid? They were afraid of backlash from the administration, from the management. They were afraid they could be term terminated because um, they have family to take care of. Many of them say I have family, that's the only job I have. I'm afraid I could be terminated and I don't want to risk that. I do understand we need a union here, we need to change some things. And, uh, but. Um, Nothing I can do about that. I'm afraid, gladly. And I do understand that where they came from, given their own background back home, where um, we came from a culture, a society where governments 
we have repressive government regimes in Africa, where these people come from. And of course, the rights of the workers, the rights of the people are trampled upon, they are marginalized, and we live with that, you know. And um, any attempt to resist was crushed. So people kind of afraid, coming from that background, that um, they don't want to see anything happen to them. So they decided to accept the condition and work with it. And I said, no, you can't, you can't do that, we can, we can do this. And now how many workers were involved in the campaign altogether? We have um, we have few workers that were the leaders, about six workers who were the union, who were the workers, and then we have um, all the people who agreed to work with the union, but they were afraid to be seen with the union, to be identified with the union. So they said, "Look, I want to do this, but I don't want anybody to know about it. Um, I just want to remain in private and do it." So many of them remain private. We had to give that support. They would take our phone calls. They would open doors to us to visit with them and discuss the union, but they don't want to come in and open. To mm -hmm. the meeting because they're afraid there may be someone who will see them go to the management. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Could you talk a little bit more about some of the issues that, that the workers were dealing with, especially the differential treatment and, and also the, you were talking earlier about the ways in which they're, uh, in which African Af workers were asked to do more work and not necessarily receive the kind of compensation or recognition that they should and, uh, and the like. Yes. Well, um, as I mentioned earlier on, there were a lot of problems that exist uh, that existed at Texas Terry, and they still do exist there. And I hope the union can make a difference. Um, some of the, some of the problems included um, um, wage differences between people of different color doing the same work, like I talked about earlier on. And um, people who do the same work, and um, the African way get less pay as compared to the white who do the same job. And um, when the African go and ask for pay raise, that the work would do, and then they will say go back to school if you want a pay raise. They will say that. And they wouldn't appreciate the work of the Africans. We work very hard there. We um, so now why was that a problem that they would say well go back to school? Because the thing, if you go back to school, you can become, for for example, um, you want an LPN, a less than practical nurse, and when you went for pay raise, they will say go back to school and become an RN, you get more pay. That way, if you were a nursing assistant and you went for a pay raise to them, they'll say, oh, go back to school and become a TMA. If you got two or three dollar raise, or you can go back to school and become a nurse. That way you can get a raise. So, but we can and give what about raise. the other workers that they had given raises to? Yeah, they would give raises to some of the white workers who would go and ask for it. Right, and then... And um, had they done the same? Had they gone to school to get their raises? You no, they didn't go to school. They did the same job and remained in the same position, but they got raises. This was some of the problems. And other problems were um, shift differential. The shift differential um, was very, very minimal. I was told by one group that it was 10 cents shift differential between the, P the PM shift and the night shift. Can you explain shift. what shift differential means? Shift, shift differential is a difference in terms of, uh, um, dif different in terms of pay, pay uh, rate between shift. Mm -hmm. um, one shift we have, um, like for example, the AM shift we have like uh, ten dollars and twenty five cents shift um, a, a rate pay rate, and then the PM shift we have like uh, ten dollars and fifty cents. The twenty five cent is the shift differential, and then the night shift may have, uh, for example, ten dollars and seventy five cents. Mm -hmm. Another twenty five cent shift differential between the PM shift and the night shift. That's the shift differential. So um, shift differential very minimum. Uh, still twenty five cents. And um, other said it was 10 cents. And in one case, I was told by one worker that even though they said 25 cents, but I never saw that on my paycheck, mm -hmm. the shift differential. When I talked to the HR, they said, oh, it's calculated, it's there, it may go to taxes and stuff like that. So these are some of the things we want to change to make sure they get better uh, shift differential and better wage wages, and they can get um, raises as they go. Some of them work like five years, six years, and they make the same pay the same rate from the time they were hired to five years ago, they still make the same um, pay uh, rate, which I think needs to be changed. How is that important to an African immigrant worker? I mean, why is that issue of the wage and, and, and the potential possibility of giving a, a wage raise, why is that important? It is, it is important because um, 
it, it is necessary um, across the spectrum, across the labor force. They should get raises as they go. That's necessary. And more important to the African workers because um, this is not their home. Many travel from home and they came here. And they still um, have competing economic um, expenses, costs that they go through paying the bills, taking care of the families here. And they have relatives that are left back mm. who they feel obligated to. And once in a while, they do send money home. Some have their parents' home. Some have their parents' home. They only came here with their wives and children. And they support their, fam their parents back home. I do the same. I have family members or relatives home that I do support to, to call me. And after 14 years of civil war in our country, where our infrastructure was destroyed, and um, unemployment rate is very high, and um, they look up to us, and then we try to help, and stuff like that. So, of course, pay rates make a big difference in African mm -hmm. community, yes. Now, you had a vote in November, is that correct? Yes, we did. And what, was the, what were the results? The results were um, two to three. That is, um, we had twenty, we had thirty-four votes, and they had twenty-four votes. Those who supported the union, who voted yes for the union to represent them, were thirty-four, and we had two votes. That the strategy of management to get workers to not vote for the union. They did use intimidation and harassment. And for example, expectedly, um, they started out with me. They did fire me. In a nutshell, how is uh, how is this experienced? Um, and how has the experience of winning the union influenced the, your co-workers? I think they're excited. Many of them are excited. They're happy that um, the union will be able to provide some better, deliver some of the benefits they expect, like pay raise, and they will be able to get uh, more pay for the work they do. And then, of course, they're happy that uh, they'll be able to take better vacation, mm -hmm. and then they'll have other benefits, like um, better health care, and um, uh, um, like sick time. They do have sick time, though, but I think it can be better than what it is. And they think the union will bargain on behalf of them and help get this uh, benefit delivered to them. So they are excited. And they are more happy that uh, they won't get written up. They are going to use the um, say, one guardian rights, which is um, when the supervisor calls you for any disciplinary action in a meeting with him or her, you have to call the union representative to be there. They are very excited about that. Mm -hmm. Do you think other immigrants should be organizing like as yeah, workers think, in this yes. campaign have? Yeah, I think other immigrants should be um, organizing. and um, um, We live in a complex society right now than we are used to. And immigrants are still trying to adjust. They are grappling with um, adjustment. Um, they don't understand what their rights are. They, they, um, they are afraid and they have communication barriers. And um, they do understand that um, workers, um, employers, some employers um, do not, um, they do not uh, recognize um, their importance and, mm -hmm. uh, of course, and look down upon them. And, of course, um, having, having a union which will provide some protection to make sure some of these things don't happen. So I think uh, immigrant workers are excited about this, and uh, many immigrant workers um, will want to do 